David Daniel, economic analyst. Thank you for coming. Yeah, good morning. And next to him is, uh, should I say comrade? Okay, honorable. Uh, Alarise Idubo is a politician and a political analyst. He's also joining us to uh, put this discussion on the road. Thank you as well for coming. Thank you very much. All right. I, I want to begin with you, uh, basically, Prof. Uh, there are issues about corruption that are also very economical. Yeah. But first, let's talk about how that it will appear the conversation is not so loud anymore about co uh, corruption as it were. Because remember, that was last year, which was just about three years uh, of uh, the first term of President Muhammadu Buhari when uh, the issue of corruption was uh, more uh, of a bite than it seems to be now. What has been your sentiment? Uh, that fundamentally you've just spoken is not uh, all that uh, economics. Mm -hmm. Though we could trace some economic linings there. Okay. Now, when the president came on board, he was sworn bound to deal with corruption. Mm. And he actually started. Uh, Nigerians, mm. most of them were comfortable, especially the masses, that at least we've had a messiah in parenthesis, who would come and retrieve or take back whatever fund that was embezzled by the corrupt officers. However, they did not see some fundamental economic projects going on side by side mm. with that act. And so the common cry was, ah, if you are withdrawing money, taking money from these people, let us see what you're doing with that money. And uh, that was what actually posed discouragement to people. <laughs> and then, we know we are in an heterogeneous society where people see things from different perspectives and in most cases fueled by their own selfish interests. In a multi-party society like Nigeria, you realize that any stride you take, whether positive or not, people would want to blacklist it. So we found Nigerians shouting that these corrupt practice and this anti-corrupt practice was actually to indict people that were not in the president's good book. Coupled with the other reason that the president has not been using the money for the fundamentals or they have not yet perceived what the president was doing with the money. I think that is the better word. Uh, there was this dissenting voice mm. that, look, Mr. President, we are tired about this rally of corruption. You go ahead and invest, make public investment, mm. and let us see. With the recovered people, funds. Give, yeah, with the recovered funds. Mm. Give people jobs and let us see. And the cry was so sharp because the income gap between the haves and the have nots was still on the wide. The poverty level was still very high. Why there were promises that corruption levels will drop, Nigeria was still 144 out of about 169 nations that were captured by the official authorities. If you look at the Lawrence curve, you realize that the income was not properly distributed. And so, the press, media, they were all shouting, Mr. President, if you are collecting money from these people, let us see what you are doing with it. We now see that in contemporary times, the president has left the normative issues of Nigerian economy, that is, issues of corruption mm -hmm. and all that, to the positive issues. How do we now generate employment for these people? Mm. How do we now ensure that roads are being built? And that is its current strife, which is plausible. We see a Kerman road, for instance. 
We see different things going on, but it's still not a satisfactory move, though it is a step in the right direction. Okay, let me, let me come to Arashe Dubo now. When, when you look at, uh, if you uh, listen carefully to what uh, Vice President uh, Yami Oshimba just said in that soundbite, you realize that he actually talked essentially about grand corruption. And he talked about how before this government, the Buhari government, came into power, uh, you had a situation, according to him, where a president could just write and withdraw as much as 100 billion, for example, from the Central Bank of Nigeria, that they had to find a way to run circles around that. Uh, there, there's, there's so much of controversy as to uh, whether we are winning this war as we now know it or otherwise. Yeah, I very honestly, I give it to President Buhari mm. that his intervention in this fight is plausible. Okay. But again, like you said, the bite is no more there. One of the very cardinal campaign points but it was coming to fight corruption, which he did effectively in the first, second years. Mm. But like you said, the bite is no more there. Yes, you are fighting corruption, that's fine. I mean, uh, if you ask me, I think he did well in the first one or two years because looking at the quantum of cash right. that was taken out of Nigeria in the last 59 years, we lost over 400 billion US dollars. That's a whole lot of money. Yes, you know, to corruption in Nigeria. So when he came, yes, we, we saw a situation where federal government recovered XYZ dollars, pounds, naira. You can find a situation whereby as much as 10 billion US dollars recovered from mm. some individuals. So very honestly, yeah, he did well. But now, now he has been, he has been polluted. Right by some people who, who came with the idea of saying, President, this one said, don't, you don't do, I beg. Mm. Let us now look at other things. Because now, some of those who are, yes, it started well, but he now watered it down by now selectively choosing people to punish. And it was, and that's- to punish or uh, prosecute for crimes? It, you know, it, it punish, it, it was just punishing them. They were not prosecuted, I mean, for instance. How many people have been jailed? I mean, if, you, if, if for four years, if you were prosecuting, a criminal, as you know, in, 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 in a financial crime court. Crime court, yeah. Then, of course, by now we should be seeing some convictions. Mm -hmm. But That's now, true. I think it's punishment. They just selectively choose some people to punish them. I'd have been, you know, he started to be vindictive. But I won't say that he said it very well because we now came to understand that some persons plunged Nigeria into untold hardship by their actions. And corruption is just a way of enriching yourself systemically. So I want to believe that now he should ask himself how much of this war has been won. Mm. Because there are people who, who, I mean, we just saw some 43 you know, nominees for ministerial positions. Four of them are fingered in financial crimes. Mm. And, and they are reappointed. So he has, so to speak, okay, join us, we forgive you. And when they are, they are known persons who mm -hmm. have plunged Nigeria into mm. untold hardship by the acts. So very honestly, he, he himself watered down the situation by people have now lost confidence mm -hmm. in the process mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. some persons that are visibly corrupt have been celebrated. So if you have a system whereby the, the corrupter and the corruptee, they are now working together, then of course you find yourself to uh, uh, to be at a loss. But I wouldn't say this: people are suffering so much by acts by some people who have plunged Nigeria into untold hardship. Now we don't have good roads. Now we don't have medical, you know, institutions that can take care of basic health requirements. And the quantum of cash being cut away by people will be enough to build these infrastructures. Why will we now do some medical tourism for what? How about, the, how about the position of those who say the, the president is even probably overwhelmed, and by extension, the government, given the, the enormity of insecurity in the country, which of course the government must take responsibility for? That's also corruption. That's also corruption. How's that? We, we, we have listened to, to the chief of army staff several times. We have, we have, we have conquered Boko Haram. We have taken the flags. 
We've heard that over 10 times. Every day you conquer Boko Haram, the next day you hear about Boko Haram. It's for, that's, that's corruption. Mm -hmm. You are deceiving the people. When you deceive people, it's, corrupt, it's an act of corruption. Because you keep saying you have conquered Boko Haram, only to hear the next day that they have attacked somewhere in uh, the same place you have conquered. So for me, it's insincerity of purpose. When you talk about insecurity, somebody, I was listening to a commentary yesterday. We fought the Nigerian Civil War in three and a half years. Mm -hmm. We are fighting Boko Haram for 10 years. It's total, insin total insincerity. That's corruption. When you find... Maybe how, about, how about dynamics like the times that have changed, the strategies being employed by this set of uh, insurgents? I'm, I'm sure don't, also, don't those count? I'm sure you're also aware that... Let me not you know, say, say a few things here. But basically, mm. within the flanks, they say monies meant for ammunition were diverted. So if you, dive, if, if you are going to fight a war and you have budgeted XYZ naira or dollars to prosecute the war, right. and you are supposed to buy XYZ weapons, and you take the money out of, out of the till and you don't do what you should do, of course, you are exposing your officers to danger. That's corruption. So the dynamics may have, you know, say, well, fine, terms of time, but basically, we need to reconscientize ourselves mm -hmm. in a manner that when a thing is meant to be done, it should be done to achieve the result mm -hmm. you expect. So there should be accountability. Oh, basically. Mm -hmm. Well, basically, I think what we have here, the Boko Haram war, for me, is a distraction. It's a distraction because tell the people what it is. People were, people were going to, you know, when, when you see you've captured an area, people are now moving to that area to go and offer some services, mm -hmm. and, they are, and they are captured. Only, only laugh, you say that, why, where did they come from to capture them? So you don't have, you, you have not captured anything. So for us, the military people must be honest enough to say what it is. It's not a distraction. If you are fighting, if you can fight from different fronts, mm. if corruption is there, one, the insecurity is there, two, you must tell yourself what you want to achieve. The process is not you fighting, it's, it's not him fighting the fight. It's, it's not him physically fighting the fight. That's the president. The soldiers are fighting there. Mm. The anti-graft group are fighting here. So they can, they can be working together differently. But, but he has to governize the efforts. You know, he, all he needs to do is to put correct people in correct places. It doesn't have to be there. It doesn't have to go and be fighting there. If, we, if there is corruption, put people who can fight corruption. If there is insecurity, put those who can fight insecurity. Mm -hmm. you, you don't need to... You, it, it's, you know, it doesn't have to be you everywhere. Are, are you saying there's, there's, there's a gap in competence as far as these areas are concerned? I wouldn't say so. Mm. I wouldn't say so, but basically it can be, it can, it can, it can be manifested. Okay. It can be manifested. If, if there's insecurity, put people who can secure the country, put them there to be fighting. It does not in, in any way take from the fact that those fighting corruption are fighting corruption. So do them, you know, they can, they can, be, they can be running, you know, separately. But I won't say this. For you to fight corruption, you must express or show some degree of sincerity. Mm -hmm. And once people see insincerity in your actions, then of course, the people will not be excited by your fight. But I give it to him that in his first two years, he did so much because he exposed so many things to Nigerians. Yeah, that's true. To Nigerians. Mm -hmm. That's true. The quantum of cash mm -hmm. together from Nigeria and the level of corruption. But I haven't, I haven't done all of that that he said. What are we not doing with all the recoveries? Mm -hmm. You brought in so much money. We, we need to talk about what we're doing with those recoveries in the bid. But, but let, me, let me come back to you quickly again, Prof. Yeah. The, a lot of people say corruption is uh, hydra headed, but again, it's financial corruption in particular, mm -hmm. which some people would argue is very insidious. Mm -hmm. How insidious really is that? Uh, in the first place, the difference. Mm -hmm between financial corruption and other forms of corruption is actually without a distinction. Or is a distinction without a difference. Uh, financial corruption is well labeled and is something that is before all our eyes to see. That is why in most cases we complain and say, oh, this one is more terrible than the other and all that. But there are non-financial corruptions which, for instance, somebody given a job to do and he doesn't do it. 
under the code of government, although in the long run it falls down on finances. If we talk about the insidiousness of uh, corruption, financial corruption, the multiply effect comes to play. If you take 5 million naira out of an economy, it's not just 5 million naira you've taken in the long run. Depending on the multiply effect, it may be up to 20 million naira. And these things, as the chairman has just said, revolve about other tangibles like loss of lives and all that. We talk about facilities in terms of drugs, uh, in terms of education. In most cases, when we come to roundtable talks discussing all these things, we want to blame A or B. But the truth is, the long-run implications of what has been done is what we see going on. Now, at first, you ask if it has some economic bearing. Actually, there are economic fundamentals giving room to this. Uh, let's take a look at the budget in the first place. Mm -hmm. Over the years, there has been this clarion call. And sure, that to meet Millennium Development Goals, MDG, that your budget should be more capital inclined than recurrent in order to provide jobs for people. But that is still not within our habits. So the people are without jobs, and whether we like it or not, Survivor is a fundamental instinct in man. So, these are the problems. Poverty, although, is not the only reason for corruption. As a matter of fact, those who are more corrupt in our society are not even the poor people. Most poor people just give them something to take home. Yeah, they are fine. satisfied. Mm. Greed, avarice, is a fundamental issue. And that is why, like I said before, it's not chiefly economics, but there could be some economic <laughs> linings. Let, let's talk about other things that are very uh, salient to this conversation about corruption and the fight against it, which are systems. A lot of people mm -hmm. say we, we have a country with systems that even encourage and gender corruption in such a way that somebody can just wake up and pull up uh, a few strings and be able to move cash out of this country, able to perpetrate any form of uh, corruption. Isn't that also a problem of system? Well, I think uh, it's an either yes or no answer. Okay. We want to believe that institutions like the ivory towers, institutions like the court, do serve their purpose. But in most cases, they don't. If you put a law preventing people from selling a good in Nigeria or in other countries, because this corruption I'm talking about is not basically a Nigerian matter. If it were, we wouldn't have had what happened to Heron in America. Good. Just that those people might have perhaps gone beyond what we call prostrate corruption, which we have in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Now, if you stop the sales of a product in Nigeria, you've only rendered it more expensive. That is exactly what you have done. The same institution that should have prevented that <coughs> product from being sold. In the first place. In the first place. You now find it encouraging it by the officials that were posted there to prevent it.
my practices are in the university, not because of the students alone, because of the lecturers also. Criminals can bribe their way out because there is a policeman to take bribe. <laughs> and so we cannot just tell, uh, you know, uh, console ourselves or take solace in the fact that there are institutions there. We conscientize ourselves. Look, this is the problem. If you do this, this is what you will get. And ensuring that people live up to some basic standard. Because if that is not the case, you have set them up for crime. So the institutions are OK, though, like I said, they do not really serve in the final analysis in preventing these things. If, if, if the systems are OK, according mm -hmm. to you, why don't we have a situation where there is the argument that we have weak institutions and strong men? Mm. Like I, I told you, I said, the, the systems are OK, mm. but they are not, uh, it's not perfect. They're not serving their purpose. It, no, it's not perfect mm. as it were. Mm. It's not perfect. They are delivering are, results maximally. Of course, uh, they're not. We've not seen results mm. as it were. Yeah. We've not seen results. But like most things human, mm. uh, like most things human, we we'll see failures in those things. Mm. But the truth is, the individuals themselves have to be enlightened. This is the problem. If you put this thing there, this is what you are going to get. If you do that, this is what you're going to get. We should see Nigeria as our own personal business. Mm. Because the thinking is always, if I do this, this thing will not have direct negative consequence on me. It's on the other person. When we are properly reconscientized, the truth is people are going to, ah, Look, I have something I'm going to do. This one will profit me much. So why should I go into such a thing? So I think it shows the conscious level of the people. As a country. As a country. Let, let me come back to uh, Idubo now. Looking at uh, the recovery we've done so far, because again, that is uh, an issue that has generated uh, a level of controversy. Uh, some analysts uh, striking a, dif a difference, or if you will, a distinction between uh, loot recovery and actually fighting corruption to its roots. But in any case, you, you're, you're wondering, the, the, the success we've recorded so far, especially when you look at the monies that have been recovered mm -hmm. by way of fighting corruption, have we, can we say we've accomplished something commiserate with such recovery? Let me, let me react to one of his comments. Okay. He said, it's, it's people, are, people, are, people are not corrupt because of poverty. Mm. It depends on how you define poverty now. So poverty is relative too? Mm -hmm. yeah. Poverty. Poverty is just poverty. Poverty of character. Okay. <laughs> so beyond the pocket. Yes. It's not, it's, it's not just poverty of cash. Mm -hmm. It's the poverty of character. Mm -hmm. So very honestly, and that's a very major, major point. Mm -hmm. People don't have character. I mean, what's corruption in the, in the first place? It's just a man who has no character. Taking advantage of a position to do what is illicit. Mm. So if you have character, there are some things you just would not want to do. So I won't say all of this. When you recover funds from these processes, although it may not be easy for anyone to say to tie to these recoveries a project, right? Because it's possible they are using the money for various projects, but people are trying to say, okay, fine. If you have recovered X, Y, Z amount of money, show us precisely that this project is from this recovery. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, we, we recovered X, Y, Z, you know, Naira or dollars or whatever. Then with this recovery, we have built this. Yes, yes. Then people can ask, okay, ah, okay, fine. This project is tied to this loot. Okay. But people are asking, okay, we, you know, people are getting confused. Ah, all these things we are recovering, what are we doing with them? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But if you show, it's possible that they are doing a lot of things so. Okay. But if you tie it a to project this, yeah, to, to that recovery, yes. say, ah, this money is stolen by Agarese, oh, fine. This $10 billion, 
Now we are going to reduce medical tourism. Mm. So we're going to build a hospital to show that, ah, they can see, ah, this is Agarese loot. Right. Then you tie it to it. People don't understand. They, they, they will not be confused. They will be clear in their minds. But I would say all of this, I think what we should do, I mean, what I think should be done now is going beyond the rhetorics. Oh, fine. We are recovering money, recovering this. Punish them. Mm. You must, you must let, let, you, let you see some punishment so that it can serve to my mind as deterrence to, uh, for that commission of these crimes. Because when the corrupter and the corruptee now become friends and they now work together, it's like the cat and the rat now becoming friends. The cat no more, you know, harasses the rat. The rat no more runs away from the cat. Mm. Where it was the cat, the rats were there. But now the rats and the cats, they now, they now cohabit. So basically, when you want to fight corruption, show a high level of character. The way you do all of this, a friend of mine used to say to me, if you want your father's children to be afraid of you, take your mother's child, give a heavy knock. <laughs> when you give your mother's a message, you give your mother's child a heavy knock, then when your father's children see you, they'll be scared. But if you now assemble corrupt people because they were on the other side, they now come to join your side, they are no more corrupt. Then of course you you have not shown character. So what I think should be what I think should be done when a man is corrupt, whether you are here or there, let the law take its course. And the law should be speedy. Mm. Not, a, not a corruption case lasting for a whole tenure. A four-year tenure, you try a case in January 19, 2015, is there till 2019, it's even continued to 2023. So punish people, let people see. Let there be, let it tell you, tell you punishment ascribed to an action. Then people will not be afraid to say, ah, if I do this, why do people steal money? Like he says, it's not greed. There is a difference between need and want. That's true. People don't, you just, you know, when you steal money, at times we start to wonder, why would a man steal $10 billion to do what in one's lifetime? Mm -hmm. You keep money for your, you see, people, parents should not live their, that, you know, I mean, don't prepare tomorrow for your children. Mm -hmm. Prepare your children for tomorrow. All right. People want to prepare tomorrow for their children by stealing so much money. The, those children will just come and waste the money. But if you prepare them for tomorrow, they will come around, understand the elements, mm -hmm. and they will act in manners that would you know, suggest to everyone that they are prepared for tomorrow. So very honestly, those who are corrupt, I think they have some mental problem because when you steal so much money to do what with it to do what with it you can live a very comfortable life yes you know the things that you really need are not such that will make you not be corrupt you find a governor for instance who they say is corrupt i mean a governor, should not, a governor should not be corrupt for instance you have so much money to play with you don't need to be corrupt uh -huh. if if you're if you're if you go according to your needs, you don't need to be corrupt. That's too, true. too much money to, for you to play with. That are your, that, money. that are legitimate and all that. allowances. Mm -hmm. That's true. Legitimate. There are a lot of money you can play with. You don't need to steal money from your till. But, but, but how about the, the pressure that people, members of the public, uh, also put on these elected officers? Uh, I mean, in such a way that sometimes they are pushed beyond their limits. No, listen. You see, this, you see, these things they call pressure. I mean, I'm a politician, for instance. Uh, Have you ever been pressured? Were you ever of pressured? Of course, I'm, even till tomorrow. Did you break? I was telling my wife yesterday. Mm. Some of my friends came to my house in the morning as early as 7, 7.30. And uh, one called when I was sleeping. And I said to him, meet me at 9 o'clock. By 8 o'clock, he was, he was by my gate. Then I asked him, but I said 9 o'clock. Where did he come for? He said to me, you know, the last flood, I lost four and fifty you know of my birds mm -hmm. and now he need you know he needs money to do it right and he came to ask for money i said sorry i don't have money but i had to give him little a little mm. which i considered was coming for me okay but let me just say this to you you know minus this thing you call pressure mm. some individuals also encourage corruption like you know, some families encourage i mean if you are if you are an appointee of government for instance some of your family members will expect you to have too much money. Mm -hmm. 
where you get money from is not their business. Not business. They believe that once you're in government, you must have so much money. So I will tell you, you know, you, you have fallen into a big river and water didn't cover your body. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know if you understand what that mm -hmm, means. Mm -hmm. You have fallen into like Ikoba River, for instance. Mm -hmm. And you are and, and you're not drenched. And you're not, you know, I mean, from and top you, to and, bottom. And you come out and you are dry. Mm -hmm. So they expect that having fallen into the big river, you should be <laughs> dripping of water. Yes. So, but they also encourage corruption. So, persons who don't think, I'm talking about the corrupter and the corruptee now. Right. So, persons don't think you can just, you know, get favor freely. Mm -hmm. They encourage you to even take money for, for helping them. I've done a few things with some people. And uh, they think that I should get a benefit from my action. Okay. You know, well, at times you, you, can, you can do something for somebody for free. It should not be tied to any, any financial benefit. Mm -hmm. But some people think you must, you must give. That's something in return. That you must so they should get to be must, given to yeah. So they encourage some persons who ordinarily, you know, have not been thinking in that direction. Mm -hmm. You now bring them into that kind of thought. Yeah. And they start, when they now enter that school of thought, they're not perfected and become corrupt. Let, let me talk to you about something, or maybe I should allow you to talk to us about something. You, you know, by way of fighting uh, corruption, this government introduced the whistleblower policy. Uh, have you been thinking about that lately? Some people say it's uh, up to the anthem as far as fighting corruption was concerned. Others said it was not even necessary in the first instance. Yes, you know, when you blow whistle, how much of protection is given you give to the whistleblower? Yes. Mm. You know, you, you, there's some things that you naturally expose yourself to danger. Of course, that's true. You see a man who is stinkingly corrupt, and you go and blow whistle. One, they will first of all take the whistle from your mouth. Mm -hmm. They will pluck all your teeth <laughs> and cut your lips. So you cannot blow whistle anymore. <laughs> so very basically, and they expose the blower to risk. It's not a situation, I mean, they expect you like the like a few of the whistleblowers, when we're going to give them checks, they announce their names. They were giving this person this check. <laughs> no. Was that counterintuitive? That was totally out of place. Mm -hmm. If a man has you know blown a whistle, for instance, and it has led you to recovering X Y Z amount privately, keep the man's identity you know you know out of That's the true. public view. That's true. But when you now say, okay, fine, I received blew a whistle. And it led us to recovering X, Y, Z. We're not giving him 1% of the money and he's giving the check publicly. They say, hey, okay, fine. So, honestly, I, the whistleblower thing is fine. If you blow whistle wrongly, it's like a referee blowing, and now you have the VR. Mm -hmm. If a referee blows whistle that is wrong, they revert to the VR. <laughs> but if you blow whistle and you wrongly blow a whistle, they should also punish you mm. for, for misinforming the people or yeah. misinforming the authorities. So people, people, so what you want to, if you want to blow a whistle, be sure that you know what you are blowing the whistle for. And once you blow the whistle, and they, if it leads to the arrest of anybody, they can reward you in a manner that the other person will not even know who blew the whistle. Mm -hmm. But I would say all this, the whistle blow thing is fine. It is still very effective, but then it must be done in a way that the identity of the blower mm -hmm. is, is protected. protected, yeah. protected. Yeah. But how is all of this? I think in this country, let us also, you see, we, we, we gratify, we glorify people, people that have no scruples. Mm -hmm. A man that has no pedigree, they, by selling fly to become rich, mm -hmm. society, society would you know, acknowledge you as having arrived. So until the ethics are right, society mm -hmm. should not glorify a man who by selling flights became yes, rich. Yes, that's true. And you just see, you know, they say the end justifies the means. They don't care how you come about your wealth. So very honestly, you should look at the man. Yesterday he was here. Today he's here. How? Mm -hmm. And nobody cares about how. They just okay. He was here yesterday. Today he's here. Whichever way he got here, fine. It's not my business. to God. <laughs> celebrated by traditional rulers. Celebrated by pastors. Pastors. Celebrated by family members. members. And that becomes a matter. When a man doesn't have money, society doesn't recognize him. So they now, so the man also say, fine. If money is the matter, I must look for money, because that, that's the standard now. Yes, I must, if, if that is the point, I must look for money, because you want to meet 
up with a certain standard set by society. Mm. Not, by, not by your right, not, not by all your right. Oh, so people have set for you a standard which you want to meet. A man, a man earns $500,000 per, for, for instance, salary. And when you see the man's you know, monthly expenditure pattern, mm. he's spending about, about $2 million, $3 million. And his pay is 500. Nobody asks any question. Say, so, ah, the man, you know, it's okay. The man is celebrated by people. So people should start to ask questions. How did he arrive at this point? Until we start to do such things. When you don't, start, when you don't glorify people who just make money by sudden flights, mm -hmm. then people will now understand that there's no point making money in a manner that's not consistent. But I haven't said all of this. It's a two-way thing. People should not celebrate people because of the amount of cash they have. That's true. Celebrate performance, celebrate excellence, celebrate a journey. Before we take a break, now I'm going to ask Prof quickly, just before we hit a break. When, when you listen to the vice president when he spoke earlier, I talked about the TSA, the Treasury Single Account. Uh, that was, from what we understand, a policy that was started by the Jonathan administration, but it's fully implemented by the Buhari government. Yeah. Uh, that has been able to help do an aggregate of revenue for government on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, that has also cut down corruption, hasn't it? Mm. I don't think so. Mm. And if I must be emphatic, no. Uh, while there has been some coordination in terms of uh, disbursement of funds, right. the ends to which those funds are being put have not been properly defined in actual manifestations. So what the TSA account just did was to tell the world that rather than using about us, say more than 10 accounts for one office we are now going to use just this account the economic ends of the money that are being disbursed are still quite elusive so the tsa account while of course the welcome development has not really checked corruption it has only checked coordination of disbursement of funds. No, I, I, I think it, just, I think it, it did, it did it reduce corruption. Mm. Because you see, those days, a, a, an institution can have 10 accounts. Right. Some operated by the head of the institution, mm -hmm. privately. Public funds. They paid, okay, Within the MDS yeah, in yeah, some yeah, cases. Yeah, yeah, they pay this, and they just, you know, but now you have one account. There's, there's still corruption, but it, it reduced to a very, it, it, it reduced corruption because I, I know some institutions that will separate earnings, mm. put some here, put some here. These ones are protected by privately. There are still funds for the institution. Yeah. But now all the funds are actually put in one place. Mm. There's, there's still corruption, but it's not, it's not the, you know, the way it used to be. It's not a grand corruption. Yeah, 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 yeah okay. <laughs> you know, it's, it's a peripheral corruption. Okay. <laughs> so, but very basically, now you are conscious of the fact that these monies are put in one place. All right. To now take it out of there, you have to do some, you know, you can see the there's corrupt. a protocol. You can see, can see the corrupt, but it's not as, as brazen. Okay. As a just those days, you just open these accounts. This is, this is my, this is my account. Mm. Even though it's from, from the system. Yeah. You open this account and, you, and you'll be drawing it from that account. Mm. So now it's no more there. Even though they still try to circumvent some of these things. But basically, to my mind, I could have been wrong, but to my mind, it has reduced corruption. Okay, let's uh, take a quick uh, break at this point. Again, the Vice President uh, has uh, a word for us on corruption. Corruption continues to be one of the greatest challenges of our time. It undermines democracy and the rule of law. It distorts markets. It erodes the quality of life. It allows organized crime and terrorism to flourish. And it triggers needless wars and bloodshed. The cost of corruption, therefore, imposes on all African countries and governments a moral obligation to fight it with vigor and political will. I should point out that Nigeria has been at the forefront of sponsoring resolutions aimed at enhancing mutual legal assistance. And African countries must come together to keep the issue of asset recovery and return on the front burner 
of international discourse. We must also work hard to build cooperation and mutual understanding with our global partners. We must insist that recovered stolen assets be returned to countries of origin without any preconditions in line with Article 51 of the UNCAC. Uh, Prof, uh, yeah. a lot of people also would believe that uh, we need to take the fight uh, way beyond the public uh, circle to the private sector as well. Mm. In fact, I've spoken with uh, economic analysts who have told me over time that you have financial institutions that are even uh, complicit, especially when it specifically has to do with financial uh, corruption. Mm. And then you're, you're wondering, it's just as if the problem is ever expanding and doesn't seem to be as though there's an end to it. It becomes like a mirage when in the war. Isn't that what it feels like? Yeah, that's what it feels like. Mm -hmm. But uh, when we look at the monetary sector, the Apex Bank yes. has tried in that regard. We, unlike as it used to be, mm -hmm. now see a situation where whatever money that you retrieve from the bank that is being disbursed to you, is reflected in the CBN. Mm. So if there is some suspicious move, the individual is asked to wait and is clamped down. So we cannot say that those banks, as it used to be in those days, are still as complicit mm. as they are. So it's no longer expansionary, but contractionary. But I would like to go back to the TSE accounts, yes. which uh, my co-analyst just said has reduced some levels of uh, corruption. I was in a bank when we were discussing this matter, and I gave them a prediction that give this policy six months, mm. you're going to be experiencing friction in the financial sector. Like I said, coordination, I applaud them. The truth is, the focus on the TSC account on certain banks uh, brings about a skewed development right. in the financial sector. If we are encouraging capitalism as it should be, uh, the liberty for people to open accounts should be there. But that should have been subject to what the central bank is doing now, ensuring that whatever transaction that takes place comes under the view of the bank. Okay. So when we say TSA has, to some significant extent, reduced corruption, uh, we are really not defining the problem for what it is. Like he said, though he said he may be wrong, uh, the statistics, because when this TSA came up, we felt it was going to stab the Hydra, using your word, called corruption. Mm -hmm. The statistics do not reflect that. 2019, Nigeria is still figured as 144th nation out of about 169, yeah. in spite on of the corruption no, index. No, 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 no. On the corruption no. index. Mm. Uh, what does that imply? It implies that, yes, you've told us, go to this very bank. Okay, there, there is this major account for this office. We can no longer open much account. There is this. And these people, rather than collecting, say, 60 billion naira from five accounts, mm. they cannot collect that same 60 billion naira from one account. There, there's, there's no threshold. Is that a point? That is what we are saying. They, they cannot, so it is a matter of doing the same thing that you could do Using 20 accounts mm. through one account. Yeah. That is what I'm saying. I've not said that it has not put some, sorry, I'm not, uh, I, I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not said uh, it has not put some fights in people. But what I'm saying is that, that it has in any way significantly reduced corruption. As a matter of fact, we could even say that there are, it has engendered some biases in banking operations. That's true. That's, that's true. my answer. No, because no, we are talking about, you see, we're talking about corruption. We're talking about, we have what is called prostrate corruption. What is prostrate corruption? 
Frustrate corruption, like what some people say, is growth in spite of corruption. You take the money from the treasury, you invest it here and there, and Nigerians at least are still employed because you took that money, and though you didn't go by the rules and the laws of the game, mm. and you've invested, and then you can employ some people. The capitalist corruption, that is a, a prostrate, sorry, that is prostrate capitalism. Mm. Now, in the real capitalism, what we are saying is let everything go by the rules mm. of the game. Okay. You understand should, what I'm we saying? You should observe the process. Now, what we have seen here is a situation where, though we've not been able to give it a name, the powers that be are now saying, rather than collecting, 20, uh, collecting money through 20, 20 accounts, take it through just one account. Okay. How much is collected? And the fact that that money is being misused has really not been settled mm. by that one account. Which brings us again to accountability and transparency. Again to accountability. So if we now tell us, tell the world that uh, uh, the TSA account mm. has actually tempered the corruption problem in whatever little wit, we may not have really defined it properly. Okay, let, let, let's turn to something else that matters about corruption, I say Dubo now. Our electoral process, there is the belief that until we get it right at that point, uh, we are continuing to have this, we are going to continue to have this conversation because it's as if, as it stands right now, we are still applying the, uh, as it were, the end justifies the means kind of method. So there, there's, the, there's, the, there's the belief, there's the thought that if we can, if we can sanitize, as it were, our electoral process, which a lot of people, even Nigerians, everyday Nigerians, believe is pretty nasty, uh, we probably can accomplish much regarding, uh, regarding fighting this uh, corruption or grand corruption, as the vice president would call it. Yes, political corruption is also a very major, mm. it's a very major uh, aspect of the the, the fight we're going to talk about now, because when a man wants to become a local government chairman, for instance, right. I mean, let's use that as a baseline. Mm -hmm. The man will require about the minimum 500 million to do local that. Local government chairmanship. Yes. And you, you know, at the baseline, maybe 200 million minimum. Mm -hmm. Why? Because in your local government, for instance, there could be as many as 100 voting units. Okay. On each of these units, you need to put an agent. Each of these agents will be paid money. Before you are even nominated, the leaders will ask you for money. That's the leaders of your party? Yeah, they will ask you for money. They, 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 you know, they don't even look at how credible you are. Your credibility is measured by how much money you have. It's not even that oh, this man is a very nice man. Oh, let's vote for him. No. It's how much more. Even, they, even if they know you are very credible, you can win votes, but they still think that you don't want to bring money. So a man, a man goes to source for money to run an election. Mm. The very end result, if he becomes a winner, is to first of all think of how he can recoup. How much he has wasted. Mm -hmm. Not spent now, wasted. Mm. And the man, the man gets there, and he starts to look for how fast he could get his money. Because one, the system is not stable. There could be a whistle tomorrow and say, this is over everybody. <laughs> so he quickly looks for how to recover his money. Mm. And in the process of doing that, a lot of things will suffer. Okay. So that is until we, so to speak, reduce the cost of electioneering, corruption will continue. In that regard. In that regard. Mm. Because basically, like a man wants to become president of Nigeria, for instance. I mean, you just, it's not an easy thing. To pay agents in my own word, for instance, my own word, in my own <coughs> word, mm. one word, one word. In one election, people spent close to six million naira in one word. Mm. And the local government, there are about, some will have 10 words, some have 12 words. So if you do a calculation, if in one word you spend five million, so in ten words, fifty million on election day. Fifty million on election day. 
to pay agents and do all that, you know, attendant issues. Mm. So if you spend 15 million election day, before election, the campaigns are so well run and tied and woven around how much money you spend. So until, is it, these things must be, must reduce, well, these things, even your party men who are going to be beneficiaries at the end of the day, will still ask you for money. Right. And when you now become a chairman, they still come for favor, or favors. Mm -hmm. So these are issues that are taxable. So why, why won't you invest in the man and let him go and win than to strip him naked financially? Mm -hmm. Then you still expect him mm -hmm. to grant you some favors. So these are issues that we must start to learn. So let us now try to look for ways to reduce electioneering. Mm -hmm. And once we can do all of that, because most people, I mean, a man, a man waits for, a man will not campaign, for instance. He puts 100 million in his, in his pocket. On the day of election, he brings 100 million and buys the votes. That's, that's, that's corruption. That's corruption. He buys the votes. He just comes and says, okay, fine. Uh, I got to say, oh, you'll, be, you'll be campaigning. Go ahead. Hmm. I'll wait for you at the point, at the end point. The man waits for you at the end point. On, on the day of election, he brings money. He buys all the votes. And he puts that money. So that's, that's corruption. And once people know that they can spend money, if a man, in those days, in a community, they could say, okay, fine, uh, we know this, this professor. Mm. We can send him. Based on his antecedents. Based on, his, based on what they know of him. Mm -hmm. We can ask him to go and represent us. He, they, they just bring him. They will bring money on their own. Voluntarily. Voluntarily, Voluntarily to support yeah. him. Then the man goes there. The man understands that my people have sent me to represent them. So the, every action of his will be guided mm -hmm. by the fact that, ah, the people trusted me to send me. But at times, yeah, my, my people have called me. Which people have called you? You are the one spending money, and they say they have called, if they have called you, they should support you without you spending money. Mm -hmm. So we should look for a system whereby we can say, we can, in, in our communities, we can identify people who we think are honest, who we think can help us to achieve some objectives and send them. Until we start to get to this kind of, at this kind of positions, mm. it will be difficult for us to achieve some independence. Because basically, corruption in politics is worse. It's very, because the, the process of selecting leaders is very important. Right. So if the process is... is you know, it's warped. Terrible. Yes, yeah, not questionable. Course, you, can't, you can't expect anything from a process that was fraud by fraud. Mm. So for me, I want to uh, believe that in selecting leaders, it's important to look at the process. Because if you, if you, if you get that wrong from the very beginning, mm. then of course, the end result is corruption. And it will be corruption. Now we hear, even to pass, even to pass budget that will benefit the entire country, the, or the entire state, or the entire local government, they will ask for money. These are persons who are your party. Even in where you have everybody 100% in that Same party. party. You, you still make a provision for the legislators to pass the budget. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's corruption. Okay, I, I think we don't have all the time now, but let me bring Prof in here. Yeah. Yeah. He just made allusion to independence. Mm -hmm. right? And the, as it were, focal agencies fighting corruption, or at least leading the fight in this country, uh, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission mm -hmm. and the independent, uh, I mean, the ICPC. Mm -hmm. They have to be independent by all means. Mm -hmm. How do we encourage them to do their job better? <laughs> uh, when we say they have to be independent by all means, I think it's politically but technically incorrect. Whether we want to appreciate this view or not, the man at the helm of affairs has control over whatever anti-graph body that is set up. And in the course of this discussion, as the political analyst said, that if such means are used in which hunting people, then people lose confidence and the process lacks credibility. Uh, when the EFCC and the ICPC came on board, through retired General Oba Senjo, it was a celebrated phenomenon.
However, when there became political misalignments and uh, interactions, interference, people began to perceive them as weapons of the powers that be to destroy their enemies. Until that is settled out of the minds of people, uh, these agencies will not be seen as doing their jobs. They will be seen as weapons against the powers that be. So, uh, we cannot reliably say that these agencies are really done well in that regard and respect. As a matter of fact, if we have to look into it properly, we realize that it's all replication of issues. Because before the EFCC, the ICPC, though focused agencies, we had uh, other institutions, aside the police, we have the public bureau, uh, this uh, public bureau thing. Uh, public this, procurements. Yeah, where, where, where we petition people. Mm. So these are replication of methods, and sure. it has always been so mm. in Nigeria. It should be properly defined. If we are nearly corruption, let's nail corruption. We don't even need ICPC or AFCC to nail corruption in this country. So Code of Conduct Bureau what? is enough? Yeah, Code of Bureau, Conduct Bureau. Is that enough? Yeah, of course, that is enough. We don't need all these things to. It's just a replication of, though we, okay, we could say it has provided some people jobs and all that. <laughs> the the <laughs> truth is we really don't need if because we already had bodies, existing bodies, looking into these things. So we cannot uh, really say that these ones have come to kill the hydra called mm. corruption. However, however, to some significant extent, to some significant extent, mm. the ICPC, the EFCC, by arresting some people, bringing them to trials, though we've not seen convictions, uh, visible convictions, to the best of my knowledge, there, there have been convictions, yeah, unless, yeah, of course, yeah, by all means, you're okay, saying okay, okay, okay. that you've not okay. seen as many convictions as, many convi as you would as have expected. Would have expected. Mm. They've really done well. At least, I, you know, I told you that though it's politically correct, yes. we realize that there has been a shout mm. against corruption through those bodies. Yes. Good. Uh, is I'm not saying we should scrap up the. ICPC, and the, EFCC. the EFCC, and even the Bureau of Public Conduct, the, the, and the, the all CCB. This. What we need now is to ensure that transparency is done. Okay. As a matter of fact, the political process mm. itself, mm. sorry, the political process itself yes. should be properly diversified. Because according to Milton Friedman, he said that the free man is fundamentally fearful of concentration of powers. The powers are the center. Okay, I, I think that's highly concentrated. I think that is the problem. We really have, we, we have to deal. We have to deal, we have with, to that. deal with that. All right. Incidentally, that's the much uh, time we're allowed to take uh, on this uh, discussion uh, this morning on uh, TM. I want to thank especially my guests who have made our time to come here to lend their voices uh, to this very topical. Uh, discussion, Professor David Daniel. Thank you for coming. Thank we you. appreciate it. Thank and of course, uh, Honorable Agarese Idubo is a politician and a political analyst. We also appreciate your time and uh, your views on the program this morning. Thank you. Great. Thank you.